first of all, I just want to thank all of you for being here today. Uh, this is by far my favorite day of the year because I get to spend with all of you and recognize the many, many accomplishments um, that all of you, whether it's five years to 45, 50 years of service to the city. So this is truly a, a great honor uh, for me. Hey, Mary, keep it down over there, please. <laughs> for God's sake, you know. I love Mary. She's the best. Um, I did want to recognize, there's a, there's a city councilor that comes to this event every single year because she is so supportive of what all of you do um, every single day in the city. And I just wanted to recognize Councilor Jill Dusan. Uh, Jill, can you? Jill, thank you for all your leadership, all your support of city staff, certainly at budget time. We greatly appreciate all of the work that you do um, and uh, will continue for, for many years to come looking forward to working with you. So, Unless, of course, you leave us. Um, I, there are 191 employees that are being honored today uh, for anywhere between five and 45 years of service. And so I'll start reading lists of your names, and I apologize to you in advance if I mess up your name. Uh, I did, a few years ago, I was told that um, there was a, actually a cash bet that um, I wouldn't be able to pronounce Andy Jigaleski's name. Um, and I actually pronounced his name correctly, and so there was a lot of money lost that particular day. So. So I do apologize in advance um, if I do mispronounce your name. It's certainly not intended any show of disrespect. It's just because I just didn't know how to pronounce your name. So um, I also want to acknowledge the incredible food um, from the Barron Center. I want to acknowledge uh, Mary McCarthy, wherever she is. Oh, there's Mary. And not just Mary, because Mary gets way too much credit. Um, but uh, that entire group of folks right back there who really are the ones that... Not to diminish you, Mary, but they're really the superstars, so... The, well, I'm not sure they make you look good, but, you know, I love you, Mary. Um, so I also just want to recognize the organizing committee. There's a lot of work that goes into this event every year. Um, and so there's a group of people who spend an enormous amount of time organizing this, getting us ready for this particular day. So um, Gina Tapp from the Human Resources Department. Kathy Vosmus from HR. Uh, Carlene Kessler from HR. Mary McCarthy from the Barron Center. Uh, Clarkson um, Woodward, I saw, oh, there's Clarkson right there from the police department. Keith Hansen from Parks, Recreation, and Facilities. Uh, Amy Laguerre from the Fire Department. Uh, Jessica Grandin from the Executive Department. <laughs> Kathy Williams from Public Works. Desiree Kelly from Planning and Urban Development. Mm -hmm. And this next person threatened to have my car towed um, <laughs> when it was parked on Myrtle Street, so I'm hesitant to read her name, but um, Jen Hale, Hale from uh, Parks, Recreation, and Facilities. <laughs> Jen now knows what my car looks like, so... 
So I did want to just move into, well, actually before I begin on the five year, I did, um, I did want to thank uh, the fire department. Those of you who are here from Ladder 8, uh, I just want to thank you for making sure the truck got here in one piece and um, that we did not park anywhere near a, a power line. So thank you so much. Yeah, oh, so if you didn't know, there's an article in the newspaper uh, about South Portland literally took um, a $1.1 million fire uh, ladder truck, and before it even went out on the road, it uh, caught on fire. And um, it was, uh, thank God it wasn't in Portland. <laughs> That's all. So now I'd like to read uh, the list of the five-year um, recipients and ask you all to stand um, when your name is called, and then at the very end, uh, applause, and then um, uh, and then just sit down as quickly as the applause subsides. <laughs> uh, Mary Albert from the Barron Center. Uh, Frank Omarosa from Parking. Apparently Frank does not want to stand. <laughs> um, uh, Saleh Bazinga. So, uh, Chelsea Beard. <laughs> Chelsea's already been very successful with the baskets, so. Uh, Lauren Brislin from Special Social Services. Uh, Rayanne Burgess from the Barron Center. <laughs> Marie Burke from the Barron Center. <clears throat> Caitlin Cameron from Planning and Urban Development. Tyson uh, Kantara from Parks, Recreation, and Facilities. Uh, Jason Chan from uh, Social Services. Sam Chapin from Permitting and Inspections. Uh, Teona uh, Chipola from the Barron Center. Jeff Clark from Public Buildings Waterfront. Uh, Jonathan Casenza from the Police Department. Rosemarie Cronin from Parks, Recreation and Facilities. Uh, Anthony Dalrymple from, yeah, there he is. <laughs> he told me he's not a Celtics fan, so, yeah, so that's an issue, but that's okay. Uh, Jacob Demchak from uh, the uh, police department. Uh, J Jeff DeMille uh, from Public Works. <laughs> Keith Emery from Public Works. Nancy English from Legal. Daniel Fahey from Parks Recreation. Daniel, I'll give you applause, obviously. Shannon Farrell uh, from Parking. Jo Joan Friedman from Police. Uh, Ian, Ian Gieb uh, from the Police Department. Sorry, Ian Geib from the police department. Um, let's see, Morgan Gris Griswich from Parks, Recreation, and Facilities. Uh, Nick Gowan from the police department. Jenny Hamb Hambleton from the Barron Center. Ken Hickman from the police department. Amanda uh, Holovan from, so from Social Services. Martha Hyland from Finance. Uh, Tatiana and Jack from the Barron Center. Samuel um, Ishimwe from Social Services. Uh, Joseph James from the Police Department.
Kai um, Gar Garpu from so Social Services. Jonathan Lackey from the Police Department. Megan Langevin from the Barron Center. Kathy, uh, Kathleen Lawson from the Barron Center. Amy Laguerre from the Fire Department. Karen McPhee from Parks, Recreation, and Facilities. Jason Nadeau from the Police Department. Richard Newcomb from Public Works. Uh, Henry Pataki from, oh wait, sorry. Henry N Nikoi Bafumbo from Social Services. Deborah Pataki from Social Services. Ben Pearson. Edie Perkins from Health and Human Services. Matt Pryor from Social Services. Christopher Pupke from Social Services. John Rennie from Social Services. Eric Richard from the Police Department. Catherine uh, Rothy from the Barron Center. Catelyn Sawyer from Finance. Cheryl Shannon from Bar the Barron Center. Steven Sinclair from, the so from Social Services. Corey Spaulding from Public Works. Ryan Sullivan from Public Works. Henry Tarlow from Social Services. Caitlin Taylor from Parks, Recreation, and Facilities. Deborah Toms from the Barron Center. Jeremy Turner from the Police Department. Travers Tuttle from Public Works. Uh, Emma Valu from Public Works. Christopher Willette from the Barron Center. Thomas Williams from Permitting and Inspections. Jason Yankowski from Social Services. So that's all the five years, so please give all the five years a big round of applause. We'd like the 10 years to please stand so we can recognize all of you and then we can applaud vigorously uh, for you when, you're, when I'm done reading the 10,000 names on the 10 year. 10 year so. <laughs> Empathy, anth empathy. <laughs> so, Gina, I think I've been sampling as well. So, uh, Anthony Ampazon from the police department. Anthony, are you here? No, he's not here. Okay, because I didn't see anyone stand, Chief. So, <laughs> Carol Bellenso uh, from the Barron Center. Obviously, no one cares about being here today um, from the 10 years. Mark Chapman from Aviation, from the Jetport. Wow, okay. <laughs> so next year, we're going to cut out the 10 years, Gina. <laughs> Jennifer Dia from the Barron Center. Yay! And you got to stand, please, please stay. No, you got to stay. No, 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 no. You got to stay. Everyone's staring at you right now. <laughs> Joe, Joe Dumay? Oh, there you go. Chris Dyer from the police department. Chief, we'll, we'll talk after, okay? Serve and protect, I know, they're all out, right? So, Catherine Ellis. I had lunch with Catherine, so. Okay, here's, an, here's another name that I'm sure a lot of people didn't think I would get. Nick Gian Petruzzi. And Nick isn't even here to, for me to be able to. <laughs> yeah, I worked like three days on that name, so. Shelly Jackson from the Barron Center. <laughs> hey, Shelly. Crystal Kendricks from the Barron Center. 
Ryan uh, Lewis from the Barron Center. I like how the Barron Center is representing. I really appreciate that. We'll remember that in the budget discussions, guys. So, hear that, Chief? <laughs> Greg, Greg Mitchell, Economic Development. Did someone boo Greg? Wow, what a rough crowd. You guys must live up on Munjoy Hill. No, you just look across the street, look at the horrible things that Greg has done with all that <laughs> development. <laughs> Jake O'Donnell from Parks Recreation and Facilities. And Jake didn't bother to come either. So Jordan O'Donnell from Parks Recreation and Facilities. So Sally, we'll talk afterwards. <laughs> Catherine O'Hara from the Barron Center. Oh, uh-oh, budget kind of starting to go down. Um, Matthew Pavlis from uh, the police department. I have no faith right now, <laughs> Chief, so I may, may just, just go right over the police department names from now on. Uh, Eugene Parada from Parks Recreation. G, sorry, Jean, sorry. Lori Pride from the Barron Center. Yep, tough budget discussions this year. Ryan. Uh, Matthew Ricks, Public Works. <laughs> Definitely no 10 years next year, Gina, okay? <laughs> Kayla Rude from uh, the Barron Center. Peter Rouch from the Barron Center. Oh. Hey, Peter, Peter, you saved, you saved the Barron Center. We're on our way back up now. So, <laughs> Nathaniel Smith from Public Works. Uh, Aaron Smith from Parks Recreation Facilities. Sally. Um, Sam Tucker from Public Works. Yeah, Sam is popular. Um, Danielle West Chuta, legal. So that is all of the 10 years. Let's give them a round of applause. Anyway, so we're off to the 15 years. And again, if I would just ask you to stand up um, so you can be recognized. Um, and then uh, we'll all applaud for you at the end of the list. So leading off, Alita Arno from uh, the Jetport. <laughs> Cynthia Babb from Parking. John Bassett from Public Works. Michael Bennis from the Police Department. <laughs> Eric Kolstrin from Parking. Uh, Marjorie uh, uh, Clavett from the police department. Clavet, Clavet, okay. Uh, Brian uh, Kogel Sr. from Public Works. Susan Duty from police. Terrence Fitzgerald from the police. You see how I'm just going quickly over the police. <laughs> um, Rhonda Girard from finance. Scott Giroux from Parks, Recreation, and Facilities. Nick Goodman from the Police Department. Uh, Jessica Guggins from the Police Department. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Jessica showed up because she's got one of the greatest dads ever, so, you know. Uh, Robert Grover from Public Works, uh, from Public Buildings and Waterfront. <laughs> Anthony Hammond from the Barron Center. <laughs> Ellen Hanick from, um, from, from Nell Hanig from the Economic Development Department. <laughs> uh, 
Now, um, special congratulations to you for putting up with Greg for the last 10 years. <laughs> Michelle Hutton from the Barron Center. Teresa uh, Kuntz from the Barron Center. <laughs> Robert Lang from the Barron Center. Rocky Littlefield from the Jetport. Paul. Uh, Wendy Maxner from the Barron Center. Elizabeth Morgan from HR. Uh, David Mulry from the Police Department. Nathan Slocum from Parks, Recreation, and Facilities. <laughs> Jeff Tardiff from Social Services. <laughs> Michael Tosher from Public Works. Jeff Tully from the Police Department. <laughs> hey, Jeff, see me afterwards so we can talk about a raise or something because you showed up today. Jason Tuttle from Parks Recreation Facilities. And last but not least, one of the best we have is Kathy Vosmus from HR. You may now sit back down, Jason. Oh, we have another raffle. 667 8371 667 8371 Congratulations. Oh, uh, that's okay. You I believe you. Another one. 667-8371. 667 Yeah. Yes, that, that is the one. I'm hearing the table would like to share that with you. That's the HR one with all the booze in it. <laughs> See, it's like, there we go. So moving on to um, the 20 years, um, again, we're going to read all the names, ask you to stand, um, and then uh, we'll recognize your wonderful contributions. So first is Travis Adams from IT. <laughs> Christopher Alves from the Fire Department. Christopher Baker from the Fire Department. Vicky uh, Barre from IT. <laughs> Jeff Calloway from the Police Department. Michelle Cole from the Police Department. Gene Cody from the Fire Department. Police and Fire are really doing a good job of representing, so. <laughs> Mary Davis, the great Mary Davis from Housing. <laughs> uh, Matthew Fernald from Social Services. Chris Fleming from the Fire Department. <laughs> Chris Goodall from the Fire Department. Phil uh, Gordon from Public Works. Uh, Stephen Hale from the Fire Department. Daniel Hayden from Police. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. Andrew Hutchings from the Police Department. Roland Lachance from the police department. Oh, I was going to say, you 20 years were really go going strong there in the police department. But uh, Donna Latham from the Barron Center. 
John Lowe from Public Works. There he is. Uh, Marianne McDormand from Public Work, uh, Public Health. Glenn McGarry from the Police Department. There he is. Hey, Glenn, Janet Daigle wanted me to pass on her um, congratulations. <laughs> There's a whole backstory to that, but we'll, you know. Jay Mitchell from IT. Uh, one of my favorite names of all time, Linda Mombaquette from, eight, from Health and Human Services. James Neals from uh, Parks, Recreation, and Facilities. So we're going to go on a four-person roll for the police department, Chief, so we'll see. Eric Nevins. Yay. Uh, John uh, Nestline. Nestline. Yay. Very good. Aaron Pepin. And Donald Perot, Perone. Now here's a real test, Chief Gatro. Jesse Peters. Oh, Chief Gatro. Where's Chief Gatro at? Where is he? Oh, hey. Just want to say hi. <laughs> Ann Rand from Parking. <laughs> Michael Rand from the police department. <laughs> Annette Rodriguez from Parks Recreation. Brad Rowland from Public Works. Brad. Lawrence Smith from the police department. Oh boy, that's where it, that's where it ended. Mark Stevens from the Jetport. And Chief Control, one last one to redeem, Mark Stewart. Okay, thank you very much. So let's make sure we round of applause for the 20 years. And uh, thank you, Police Department, for the strength at the 20-year level. So thank you. So uh, we're going to move on to the 25 years um, recognition. Um, Donald Adams from Public Works, Christopher uh, Champagne from Fire. So, Chief, there's like four names in a row here. So, this is make or break for you, man. Scott Corey, Jonathan Denham. Right. Hey, thank you, thank you. Uh, Anthony uh, DePietro, fire. Uh, Bob Doherty from the police department. Joe uh, Ezepek from the police department. Roxanne Gardner from Bar the Barron Center. Paul Gilmore from Public Works. Christine Grant from the Barron Center. Alan Green from the Fire Department. Brad James from the Fire Department. Jeff Lamb from Public Works. Uh, Curtis Magnuson from Fire. Uh, Craig uh, Messenger from Fire, Steve and Nee from Fire, uh, Deb Smith from uh, the Barron Center, and Lawrence Tibbetts from Park Recreation and Facilities. Okay. So, can all of you please come up um, and for a photo? But there's um, one very special person that is not here uh, with us. 
um, who worked for this city for 25 years, um, gave everything to this city. Uh, Walter Seaman Jr. from the Public Works Department passed away a few months ago. Um, Walter was an incredible, incredible human being, public servant, served out on Peaks Island and the other islands. His family is here with us. Uh, his wife, uh, Susan, his sons, Josh, Jeremy, and Jamie, uh, and uh, his grandson, James. So they're over here with us. And then we have a, a little memorial back there, so. So um, 25 years is a long time. That's like a full career plus. And we're still going to have um, a decade or more to recognize after this. But one of the things that um, John allowed us to put in our HR budget for this year was um, service awards when people retire with 25 years or more. So that's going to be a new thing that anyone retiring will be getting a city um, gift. And we're going to have a list of of probably five or six things that people can pick up, pick from when they leave that will be something with the city seal on it because we really, we can't say enough, this isn't enough obviously for all the service and years that people put in. So thank you, 25 years, awesome. So the, the next group, uh, the 30 year, um, um, we'd like to ask all of, once your name is called to please come up front um, so you can be recognized that so we can also do a, a photo. Um, and I just, you know, I've only been here three and a half years, and I have to tell you, the greatest honor, I, I've had uh, opportunities in my career to work with, uh, you know, some interesting people with, through the Celtics and other things, but it is the greatest honor for, uh, for me to be able to work with all of you. I say this and to everyone and everyone who will listen, that I am truly blessed to work with such an incredible group of folks. And so whether you've been here for one year or you've been here for 50 years, um, you are the best. You are by far the best. So thank you for everything. So starting with your, uh, the 30 years, uh, Aaron Clark from the police department. Randy Emmons. Oh, Randy's got to be here. Oh, yes, there he is. <laughs> Charles Frost from Public Buildings and Waterfront. Uh, Larry Goodson from Public Works. Janine um, Kasserman from the Police Department. Uh, Danny Knight from the Police Department. Uh, Jennifer Lodge, otherwise known as JLo, um, from Finance. Uh, Terry uh, Martlusky Mar Mar from Social Services. Thank God they're not here. So, or he's, you know, <laughs> sorry to butcher that name. Um, James Merrill from Assessors. They're hung over from that Halloween uh, lunch that they had yesterday. It was a great thing. Um, Richard Meserve from Parks, Recreation, and Facilities. Uh, William Miller from Fire. Jen Munson from Planning and Urban Development. Um, Arnie uh, uh, Penanen. Yeah, could you see? here? It's Penanen. We knew you'd mess one up. I knew I have. I'm a, I'm pathetic. Uh, Beth Poliquin from the Police Department. 
Oh my God, a bath would not show up? <laughs> oh, Tayag uh, Rayner from the Barron Center. Okay. So let's give all of those, these folks a huge round of applause. So now we're uh, moving toward a truly, truly elite group of people. Folks who have um, dedicated their working life to the city, and we cannot thank them enough. Um, and so I'd like to invite uh, Dan Boudelier to come up and speak about Deb Jens Jensen. Come on up, Deb. Deb began her career with the uh, city of Portland in the uh, finance department. She was hired on September 5th, 1983, and she still remembers parts of the interview. We were talking about this. Um, her interview was done by Sally DeLuca at a need of a chance, which are also been around for a while. She remembers as she got up to leave the interview, the door lock wouldn't work right, so she was trapped in the room with them. <laughs> and Sally told her that was part of the test. <laughs> How many people think Sally was mean? <laughs> Pretty funny. Now, the always looking for new challenges. <clears throat> Deb uh, applied for a job in uh, the uh, technology department in October of 1987. She came to us as a uh, computer operator with the uh, Unisys mainframe in, what was the model, Deb? System 80. System 80 Model 20, which I had forgotten. She still remembers. Deb told me a story the other day about her first week of work. She was training with a, uh, one of our um, computer operators. And she remembered that he got called out of the office unexpectedly and never mentioned the fact that during the next series of jobs, she would have to change the uh, paper in the big high-speed printers. He forgot to mention that, so we printed an entire run of accounts payable checks on the wrong paper. <laughs> and if you work in IT, that's, that's terrifying. <laughs> during her 31 years in technology, she's worked a variety of jobs and received promotions. She's currently a network operations specialist, which is the highest technical position within the help desk. So very proud of you, Deb. Now, I asked some of the coworkers for comments, and one of them from Freeber, these are all good. <laughs> Freeber's comment on Deb was, she always does her best. That's important. Joanne, Deb knows her customers, and she works hard to meet the needs with diligence and passion. Nasser, which went on for an entire paragraph, so I had to trim him down. <laughs> he put lots of energy into your job, and he knows that you continue to put more energy in the coming years. Vicky said about Deb, you tirelessly tackle your job, striving to give the best possible service to your fellow city staff. And Tam, who's one of our newest members, said, being friendly is a key to success, and you have it. That was good. Now, something I thought was interesting was that out of our, as we talk about 35 years of service, out of the city workforce right now, over 1,400 people, a third of that number are under the age of 35. So that's, I thought was interesting. Within the workforce, there are only 25 people who've been with us for 35 or more years, and Deb's one of those. So congratulations, Deb.
Um, now, I have the distinct honor of introducing the next person. Um, I'd like to ask Chris Branch uh, to come up and speak about one of the best people that we have in the city. And I tell you, it is an incredible honor for me to be able to work with this gentleman, Maynard Sprague from the Public Works Department. <laughs> Maynard's been here a lot longer than I have, so. Uh, Maynard started with the city April 18th, 1978 as an equipment operator. Um, during that time, he's had a number of promotions, a number of commendations. Um, he was involved with the Hadlock Field project. I think a lot of you know that a lot of the work at Hadlock Field was actually done with in-house crews. Uh, a lot of the folks from Public Works and other departments are involved in that. Uh, he transitioned to the Senior Operations Dispatcher, where I think most of us know where he serves today, um, in 1994. Um, he's been selected for a number of awards over the years, received commendations in 82, 1994, 96, 2005, and again in 2015. Maynard has always been a dedicated employee, no matter the assignment or task. Whenever he's been asked to do stuff, he's done it, and he's done it well. He's PW's first line of customer service. Chances are, if you call Public Works during the daytime, Maynard's the one who's going to answer the phone. And as anybody who answers phones with people calling in for service-related issues, he gets to deal with a lot of very, shall we say, interesting constituents. Um, is that no matter what the level of complaint or language, Maynard's always responded in a very professional manner. Um, he's always done his job excellently. He has the, his finger on the pulse of PW operations, is willing to help out customer employees, uh, try dealing with all those folks who want to get the street plowed in the middle of a blizzard, to accomplish all concerns, requests, and does all this in the best economical way. Bannard had just done a great job over his 40 years with the Public Works Department, and we look forward to working with him over the next number of years. Maybe he'll make it to 45 or 50. Yeah, Congratulations, Bannard. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Maynard just reminded me that he spent nine years on the islands and he stayed around. So, Maynard, thank you so much. Um, you truly are, I won't make 40 years, but you truly are an inspiration. And so, you really, I mean, when it's, when the definition of public servant equals you. So, thank you for all you do. But I would also say the same thing for the next gentleman. Um, Kim Dolbo, who has been with us for 45 years, uh, is someone that I am incredibly honored, again, to work with. Uh, a gentleman who is so incredibly dedicated to the work that we do every single day, to the folks that we serve every single day. So Chris Branch, uh, if you could come up and say some great words about Kim. Well, I was going through my notes earlier, thank you to Mark Spiller and Kathy Williams. Um, I said earlier, Maynard's been here a lot longer than I have. Well, Kim's been here even longer than that. Kim's been here since August 13th of 1973. That was the year I graduated from high school. <laughs> to put that into perspective, and I sure ain't young, so. Um, Maynard, over the years, his 45 years, have received 11 awards Kim. for him. Kim. What did I say? Oh. I'm getting old. Well, I'm staring right at him. That's the problem. <laughs> Kim has received 11 awards, Employee of the Month's commendations, including the work that he did at Hadlock Field. 
excellence awards, and team awards. When you talk about customer service within the Public Works crew, Kim is the person who shows up every time as one of our top customer service people within the department. He goes out of his way to help constituents on a regular basis. Um, and he really does a great job. He's received the ACE Award. The ACE Award goes to the top performer within the department, somebody who's recognized for going above and beyond and having a thorough knowledge of the job. It just works that way. He's very knowledgeable of all types of PW operations, winter and summer. He's never missed a plow season. Think about that. 45 years of being on call to come in and work in the worst conditions, day or night. Kim's always there. As I said, he gives the greatest level of customer service. I think one of the great things about Kim is he's always mentoring other coworkers over the years, picks them up when they need a helping hand in making sure they accomplish their assignment. He is a team builder within the department. I just want to say thank you, Kim. You've been an excellent employee, and I'm glad that you're a member of the Public Works Department. It's proud to work with people like you every day, and I really appreciate all the work that you and Maynard and the other people do here. Thank you very much. Congratulations. So um, thanks, Chris, for bringing up plow season, because um, one of the things that um, you all know, of course, but I'm not sure if, if um, the city of Portland residents realize how many people that are, um, work for the city that don't get the storms off or don't get the closures, you're out there working for all of us. So could, if you are considered essential services and you work all those storms, so like police, fire, public works, any of you that do that when there's a storm or any other 24-7 role, including the Barron Center people, would you stand up so we can see that today? <laughs> Woo! Okay, you guys and women, you're what keep the city going, and we really appreciate that so much. Thank you. All right, now special award. Um, and just uh, just to also recognize the parking division as part of that essential services. So, Airport. I mean, so many Jet, yeah. yeah, I'm not essential, so I stay at home. No, <laughs> never really been that essential. Oh, so we, we uh, a few years ago we established a couple of new awards to recognize the amazing work that uh, all of you are doing around customer service and innovation, and so. Um, this year, uh, the nominating crew, uh, crew um, I think, picked one of the most important, most um, one of those people that are just uniquely committed to customer service. And so, Lanny Dobson, could you please come forward? So, um, oh, Lanny, you got to come stand next to me, please. I don't have any candy, though. Well, that's, hey, that's part of my remarks. So, so um, all of you, uh, Lanny works in the IT department, but really is, she's tucked away behind the scenes for most of her city hall uh, f uh, fellow employees because of me. Um, unfortunately, uh, Joanne and Lanny used to have open space, and now they're really upset with me, and they're tucked behind uh, a door. So Lanny goes beyond, above and beyond any, what anyone would expect in terms of customer service. Any, anyone who calls the city, see click fix, you name any type of interaction, Lanny is there providing unbelievable customer service. I mean, she is, her patience and her care eliminates a lot of the frustration our constituents have at times when they call City Hall upset about something. Her, the great way in which she handles people uh, is something to be marveled, marveled at. 
So Lanny, I just want to thank you for all that you do. I do just want to mention one thing that I do have a problem with Lanny about, if that's okay. <laughs> so, um, so I was hired in 2015, in June actually of 2015. I ran the Boston Marathon in April of 2015 and finished. <laughs> no, no, no clubs. But it's because of Lanny is the reason I look the way I do today. <laughs> I could not run around the friggin' block right now <laughs> because Lanny likes to give out candy and cookies and I have a notorious sweet tooth. So, so Lanny, uh, thank you for the girth that has been added. Um, I would not say that's excellent customer service, what you've done to me, but thank you so much for everything. Uh, so we also created this other award, which I had mentioned um, before, is, is the Innovator of the Year Award. And this goes to two individuals who have, again, gone above and beyond certainly what is ex was expected of them um, to create one of the most innovative programs that we've launched in the city in many, many years to the point of having national recognition for this program. So I'd like to ask Aaron Gear and uh, Matt Pryor to come up. So Aaron, would you mind doing me a favor in explaining to everyone what the Portland Opportunity Crew does and the, imp and the real, imp so any of us who love public service and that's the reason why we're in this profession, this program is exactly why we love public service. So do you mind? So we're, we're really fortunate to have um, support from, from John um, and city leadership in the council. So what we're able to do with that support is go out to meetings and do outreach for individuals who are engaged in panhandling and we're able to offer them employment seasonally through from May through October. Um, and Matt takes their crew out to a variety of different sites throughout the city and we pick up trash and do beautification projects. Um, I think this year we visited 47 different sites and had the crew work I think it was like 1,245 hours um, that they put in throughout the city, beautifying, picking up trash from East End Beach through the Old Port um, down to Bat Cove. And so just a really a great program, um, especially a program that when you're out there with the crew seeing the effects um, is fabulous. And I'll tell you a quick story. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I was out with my family at an event, um, and one of the participants who was um, a participant that's worked with Matt since the middle of the summer um, was actually employed at the place that we were attending the event at. Um, and it was just so nice to see that an individual who Matt had engaged on the medians back in 2017 who didn't want to participate in the program, um, Matt continued to outreach um, and engage that individual, offering him services politely each time, um, came in middle of this season, um, participated for a few weeks and is now employed. Um, and so it's those sort of stories that, that I like to tell people um, that I think that the city should be really proud of. And um, if I could tell, just tell one more, one more story. Um, there were a couple of um, individuals who were living on the streets and were panhandling, and it was because of these two gentlemen and the work that is being done in social services. Those two individuals are gainly employed, they have housing in Saco, and they have really turned their lives around. And that's what this is all about, what we do. So thank you guys for everything you do. So. Um, we also have one other um, leadership award before we get uh, to the Ganley Award. Um, there is a person, um, and this is the Municipal Leadership Award that we, we started and created last year, um, which Anita Lachance was the per first person to receive this award. Um, you've heard from him earlier, um, but Dan Boudelier, where's Dan?
So, Dan, um, you are the uh, 2018 Municipal Leadership Award winner. And it's because uh, I've, I've rarely met an individual in my career who is so passionate about what he or she does. And Dan fits that criteria completely. Whether it's talking to me about something called the dark web, um, <laughs> or many other IT related matters, um, Dan is passionate and he is caring and he really is someone that has spent an enormous amount of his career. In fact, consistently, over, he's, he's worked for us for 31 years, uh, but he also, uh, before that, I think he went to the county or somewhere? I go with Unum. Unum. Yeah, and then 10 years before he went to Unum to make the big money, uh, he worked for the city and then came back to the city to work another 31 years um, for the city. And so Dan um, started uh, in the IT department in 1976 um, as a computer programmer, which I did not know we had computers back in 1976. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, massive, about this big, big of a room. And, um, and then became a computer programmer in 1987, and then he became the IT department director in 2013. So Dan, thank you for your commitment to the city of Portland, all that you've done to make the, the city what it is today. And honestly, uh, we, we couldn't thank you enough for everything that you do. So the next award uh, is the, um, the Robert Ganley Award. Um, this is the highest public service award you can receive in the city of Portland. Uh, Mr. Ganley uh, unfortunately passed away in December of 2000 um, where, when he had served as city manager for 14 plus years. Um, this award is annually given to an employee of the city of Portland who exemplifies the dedication, knowledge, and passion uh, for, for municipal public service, uh, which characterized uh, city manager Ganley uh, during his lifetime. We recognize an employee whose work for the citizens of Portland demonstrates over a period of years characteristics such as efficient and economical use of city resources, a mastery of skills and judgment required for successful performance of their duties, a commitment to share knowledge and skills with co-workers, freely committed themselves, real concern to improve the common good, respond to gen genuinely to respond to the concerns of individual citizens, to be attentive to the voices not usually heard um, in, in City Hall. And it adheres to Bob Ganley's maxim that good public service is recognized by the substance of the performance, not by the style in which it is carried out. Uh, the selection committee, comprised of previous award recipients, Keith Gatro, Barbara Barheit, Mary McCarthy, Paul Bradbury, as well as HR staff Gina Tapp and Carlene Kessler, and communications director Jessica Grondon. The committee received seven nominations uh, for the 2018 award, and all of the nominees were uh, quite worthy and incredible. And so it was a very, very difficult uh, decision that the, that the committee came up with. So this will be the 17th winner of this award. The first winner was in 2002. So with that, I would like to ask Lisa Littlefield from the Barron Center.
Uh, Lisa uh, injured her back in service to all of us, and so that is why she is sitting. Um, so I honestly, I'm so thrilled that the committee picked Lisa. Uh, I have been so fortunate to work with Lisa over the last three and a half years. Um, again, she has contributed greatly to the girth around my middle, um, in addition to Lanny, with some of the best food I've ever had in my life. So, <laughs> so Lisa has been an employee at the Barron Center since June of 1976. She was hired as a support team worker in the Nutrition Services Division. In 1979, she was promoted to a cook two, and in 2017, she was once again promoted to the food production coordinator. Her fellow employees and Barron Center residents have their own title for her, the best cook and best baker in the state. And if there was a James Beard Award presented for public employees, Lisa would win it every single year. <laughs> Lisa has an excellent work ethic and always goes above and beyond what is asked of her. She helps with the hiring process of new employees and trains them in the use of city equipment and the day-to-day -day routine of nutrition uh, at the Barron Center. She is always professional has excellent attendance and is committed to nutrition, the nutrition needs of the residents. Lisa sought out to be the cook at the Barron Center Flamingo Breakfast. <laughs> I'm not sure we want to know what a Flamingo Breakfast is, but it's held every Tuesday morning and the residents love her cooking and demand that she preside over those breakfasts even to the point where they ask for they have special requests of Lisa, which she, of course, works with them on. Many a city council meeting or budget meetings have been discussed over one of Lisa's home-cooked meals. Mr. Ganley himself was a big fan of Lisa's homemade tuna noodle casserole. <laughs> and the people and people seek out her special whoopie pies, and I know this from my own experience, <laughs> her chocolate chip cookies. So Lisa, I cannot think of a person who deserves this more than you. Thank you for everything that you do for the city of Portland. Um, Lisa's parents are here. Could we have them come forward, please? Where are Lisa's parents? <laughs> 